into order, and I'd like to start by recognizing we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Lenni Lenape people. We will now stand for the singing of O Canada, which is brought to us um, on a video. That came all the way from Springbank Public School in Woodstock. Um, and <laughs> so um, we'll look for an approval of the agenda, moved by Trustee Goodall, seconded by Trustee Jaffe. And all those in favor? Okay, and just because I know you didn't get enough of the first video, we do actually have a second video, which is called You Will Be Found by the Choir. So why don't we start that?
So teacher Shannon Winker from Springbank Public School sent her regrets that um, they were supposed to be here to do that presentation, but they couldn't at the last minute. So they sent us those um, recordings for us to play. Um, so it's just like they were here. And that was one of the largest choirs I've seen um, from Springbank in a while. So um, we thank them for sending that along and starting our meeting like we do every month. So. Um, Moving on to item four, um, I'll ask Supervisor Williams to read the official record. We regret to record the death of Fisher Lawrence, a student at Arthur Bowden Secondary School. Tyrell Moss, a student at College Ave Secondary School on June the 4th. Brittany Bergsma, a student at Ingersoll District Collegiate Institute on June the 8th. And Ethan Scott, a student at Sir Frederick Banting Secondary School on June 17th. Thank you. We will now move to item 5A, which is recognition, and I will ask um, Vice Chair Morell to come to the podium. Thank you and good evening. <clears throat> Sayun, it has truly been a pleasure to act in the role of your mentor. As a quiet leader with a strong sense of purpose, I've watched you achieve your educational goals and also your leadership with the Ontario Trustees Association as a media design officer. As I reflect on the accomplishments this year, clearly the Student Leadership Conference was a resounding success. Thank you for letting me assist and support the planning. Soon, it was the innovative manner in which the conference was student-led and student-designed that made it such a success for our students and their leadership in our schools. Your vision for further opportunities for all students, the leadership you provided, your eagerness and your dedication serving the student voice is appreciated. On behalf of the chair of the board, my colleagues, along with the director and senior administration, we wish you continued success in all that you do. Please join me in thanking Sayun for her service as a student trustee. Thanks, Arlene, so much. Um, I want to start off by saying that as much as this sounds cliche, the last 10 months was really a life-changing experience for me, and I'll be carrying this memory for me uh, with me forever. And before I go into my specific thank yous, I'd like to highlight one of the initiatives that we took on this year. So this January, the Ontario Student Trustees Associations released the student platform for the 2018 provincial election campaign. Titled The Turning Point for Education, we built a platform that reflects three fundamental pillars of a successful education experiences and develop 16 policy recommendations to ensure that Ontario's education system continues to improve while addressing urgent barriers to a quality education. This allows student trustees across the province to be interviewed and acknowledged by numerous media sources and endorsements from school boards. Just a couple months ago, the Honourable uh, Minister of Education engaged in a conversation regarding the student mental health during a question period at Queen's Park using the student platform as a reference. Our platform was one of many examples which demonstrated that student voice does matter, but this simply is not not enough. I want to take this opportunity to say that our students hope that everyone in this room continue to support the initiatives that we take on to have our voices heard and to keep encouraging us to strive for higher things. More on a personal note, my time at the board would have not been as enjoyable without some of my colleagues here tonight. I want to thank my mentor, Trustee Morale. Thank you for all your help on board meetings and answering my questions. It made it so much easier for me to understand what's going on at the board. Thank you for thank, thank you, Trustee Goodall, for being a great chair buddy. My meetings would have not been as fun without you being with me all the time. Thank you, Superintendent McKenzie and Deb, for all your help and all your endless support for student uh, initiatives each and every day. Also, thank you, Superintendent Sador. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but he was my uh, principal at Lucas last year, so it was good to have someone I know here at the board. And thank you, Superintendent Colhane, for always checking on me and my schoolwork. Um, <laughs> 
you are the only person aside from superintendent store that I knew um, coming to this position and I want to thank you for helping me feel comfortable at the board um, throughout my months. And thank you, Director Elia, for being a, such a great, um, huge supporter for student trustees. You're a strong female role model for us, and I want to say that I look up to you a lot as an example. And last but not least, thank you, Chair Reed. Um, thank you so, so much for being a great trustee, role model, and a friend. You've driven all three of the student trustees home for the last 10 months, and I can tell you that our favorite moments were getting your Uber rides to get back home every time. And I want you to know that your support and encouragement for student leaders across the province really, really helped us to step farther. I don't think I've grown nor learned as much within such a short period of time. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be a part of something that essentially changed my life. I hope that you guys will continue to support the incoming, our incoming student trustees next year and just keep supporting all the student initiatives that will be going around at the board. So thank you. We're all elated that we still have one more year of you in the Thames Valley Board. So, um, you know, we'll see you in the halls of Lucas next year um, before you graduate. Um, Trustee Morell, would you like to read out the remarks prepared for um, student trustee Gista Kennedy, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight? So on behalf of Trustee Schuyler, who prepared these notes and asked me to read it, um, this on his behalf, it has been my pleasure, Trustee Schuyler's pleasure, having uh, Chista Kennedy on the Board of Trustees, and it was, or it has been Trustee Schuyler's pleasure to act as his mentor. Um, he comments that he, that uh, student Trustee Kennedy has made things very easy for him as he hit the ground running uh, so fast that uh, Trustee Schuyler's old legs couldn't keep up. Trustee Schuyler uh, comments when he was able to sit with uh, Trustee Kennedy around the horseshoe on Tuesday evenings or at workshops they attended to together, he admired the confidence that uh, Trustee Kennedy spoke with. Other trustees and supervisory officers have also commented on what an amazing message Trustee uh, Kennedy delivered at various workshops or conferences that they attended. Trustee Schuyler sees the strength that Trustee Kennedy offers and knows that he is grounded in the language and culture and that brings joy to Trustee Schuyler's heart to know that we have youth like Trustee Kennedy ready to receive the gauntlet of advocating for our First Nations people with renewed vitality. Trustee uh, Schuyler extends congratulations to Trustee Kennedy for placing first in the Indigenous Youth Arts Award contest by Historical Canada and the support that uh, Trustee Kennedy has at home with his family, siblings and parents goes unnoticed. He extends a thank you. So along with the fellow trustees, we offer a thank you to Trustee Kennedy and wish him well in all his future endeavours. Thank you. Moving on to item six, is there any conflicts of interest to declare? Seeing none, um, we'll move to chair's announcements. Um, and there was a press release that went out a few weeks ago, but it was in recognition of 30 years of service in public education for Trustee Bennett. Um, so I just wanted to read out the um, press release. So as many people um, around the horseshoe know, um, there's a particular milestone with trustees with, through the Ontario Public School Board Association um, that once you've hit 25 years, um, there is sort of a special award. Uh, it's called the President's Award now. Um, we won't talk about what it used to be called. Um, I think Peter Jaffe got it back when it was still called the Dinosaur Award. Um, so <laughs> trustee Joyce Bennett has been recognized with the President's Award by the Ontario Public School Board Association for more than 25 years of dedication and service to public education. Trustee Bennett was first elected in 1988 to the former Board of Education for the City of London, since the London Board was amalgamated with Elgin Oxford Middlesex um, to create Thames Valley in 1998. She has represented London Ward 7, 8, 9, 10, and 13. Um, it, there's a quote here, vision, commitment, dedication, selflessness are the qualities that give us the inspiration to take up the role of trustee. Um, set the association, which represents public school trustees across Ontario. 
The sense of accomplishment in our work as trustees very much comes from our personal and private recognition of a job well done, and sometimes it comes from public recognition by our peers. The association said the award helps recognize the outstanding contributions made by individuals across Ontario who work behind the scenes and make our schools and education system better. So on behalf of um, the Ontario Public School Board Association and all trustees around the table, I just wanted to congratulate Trustee Bennett on a very well recognized um, award. There also is a pin that comes with it in the midst of moving. Um, it is in one of my bag boxes, but I know exactly where it is and I will get it to you, I promise. <laughs> you can hold me to that. Um, and I will now move to director's announcements. Thank you, and in the spirit of recognition, I do have a couple of recognitions, but I too would like to congratulate Trustee Bennett on her long-standing service um, in support of public education. That is a huge commitment um, to our, our students and our staff, and on behalf of senior administration, thank you very much for all that you do for, for all of us, including myself. Tonight um, is Valerie Nielsen's final board meeting, um, at least sitting in the chair um, in the role of associate director. She may um, spend her uh, Tuesday evenings uh, watching on Webstream um, in the comfort of her own home, or maybe not. Um, but Valerie has um, spent 27 years uh, with the Thames Valley District School Board and the former London Board of Education. She has performed a number of roles in education from classroom teacher, uh, vice principal, principal, learning coordinator, uh, superintendent, um, as well as associate director. And I have not um, been in senior administration without Valerie as a, as a colleague um, and have worked alongside Valerie for 12 years in senior administration. And she said I would have to keep my remarks brief. We've had a few opportunities to, um, uh, to talk about Valerie's um, contribution to uh, public education into Thames Valley. But just uh, in brief, um, Valerie has uh, been an extremely valuable role model to all of our superintendents. I know she has mentored a number of our superintendents who have um, been promoted um, to the role in the last number of years. And she um, has also performed this role at the provincial level as she acts as a mentor to uh, a number of uh, new superintendents um, across the province. She also is uh, a t teacher facilitator for uh, SOQP um, certification. And she also served on the UPSOA Board of Directors um, in that capacity, along with all of the day-to-day -day roles that she performs in the role of associate director. Um, Val also served uh, for two years in the role of Director of Curriculum in Abu Dhabi, and I know that she has um, as many fans in Thames Valley. She has the same number in uh, Abu Dhabi and has uh, done a lot of work um, in that uh, country and is recognized uh, for her work. We will uh, miss Val's quiet competence. Um, she is uh, the person on our, our team that is uh, extremely, not that the rest aren't, um, caring and compassionate, um, but she provides that sense of, of uh, warmth, professionalism, um, and diligence. And um, she has dealt with some extremely difficult situations in her time as supervisory officer and associate director. Um, so we will miss uh, Val. Um, I know that uh, Riley is looking forward to uh, taking over that chair, but we do wish uh, Val all the very best in retirement. We know that she uh, will have many um, other new challenges and opportunities and adventures um, in retirement. So thank you uh, very much from all of us, Val. Deep breath. Um, thank you, Director Elliott, for your uh, very kind words this evening. Whew, just hit me. 
I would also like to thank all the trustees here for all of your support that you've given to me uh, over the years to enable me to do my roles in Thames Valley. And uh, several of the trustees here are, have been with me around this table through all my years in the senior team, and thank you each for that. It's been uh, uh, very much appreciative. Um, as Laura mentioned, I've had many different roles within Thames Valley over the last 27 years, and uh, I have been very fortunate to have those roles, and I truly thank you for that. And uh, in each of the roles I've had, I've been able to work with outstanding people, outstanding leaders, people who care about children, and I thank you for that opportunity. I'd also like to thank this entire senior team that's here beside me. Amazing group of people that I will miss, and thank you, Laura. This is hard. I want to thank you all and um, uh, thank you as you continue on in your roles as uh, people who are champions for students and champions for public education. Thank you. And it also gives me great pleasure to introduce our new um, Superintendent of Education, Pervine Skinner, who will officially begin her time um, as Supervisory Officer on the 1st of September. Um, Praveen began her career, Praveen is sitting in the audience so you can give a little wave, um, began her career as an elementary classroom teacher and has served as Vice Principal at Mountsfield and Glen Cairn Public Schools. She was an Assistant uh, Supervisor of the Summer Literacy Program and Learning Supervisor for First Nations, Métis and Inuit um, education as well as Pathways for Student Success. Praveen was the principal of Lord Elgin Public School and is currently principal at Kensal Park French Immersion Public School. She holds a diploma, uh, Etude Collegiale, my French needs some work, Champlain uh, College uh, in Quebec, a Bachelor of Arts at McGill University, Bachelor of Education, University of Windsor, and a Master of Education from Charles Stewart University in Australia. Praveen has continued her professional learning in the area of Indigenous cultural competency and has provided leadership in the development of the International Certificate Program for Secondary Schools. She has volunteered her time as a member of the Board of Directors for Women Immigrants of London, has been an impact speaker for United Way, the Chair of the Equity and Quality <laughs> Control Committee for the London and Middlesex Children's Aid Society, and Vice Chair of London and Middlesex Children's Aid Society Board of Directors. Praveen will serve as a Superintendent of Student Achievement for the Banting, Laurier, South, and Westminster Community of Schools. Please join me in welcoming Praveen to the Senior Administrative Board. And uh, just my final announcement, as we uh, conclude um, this school year, it has been um, such a pleasure to serve in uh, my role as director for Thames Valley District School Board. I would like to thank all of our staff for their hard work and dedication and for um, working very uh, diligently with our students. And for those who could who may be retiring, I would like to thank you for your service, for co uh, contributing exceptional um, services to our school district. We wish all of our retirees good health and newfound adventures. To our th parents and our families for their ongoing support of children and collaboration in working with our schools and working toward the common goal of success for all students. Thank you to our community partners for supporting our students and helping to create a culture of learning and innovation. And to our graduating students, we wish you the success in your future endeavors. We hope that Thames Valley has inspired you um, in becoming global citizens, where you apply not only the skills and knowledge you have gained, but also the compassion and the kindness that are the cornerstones for a more empathic society. Be proud of your accomplishments and all that you have achieved. And we have uh, a number of different accomplishments. Um, uh, Chair Reed and I have uh, co-written a uh, message to all of our um, Thames Valley uh, education community, and that will be posted on our website um, tomorrow. Um, I wish everyone a safe um, and healthy summer and uh, enjoy a different pace and maybe some new adventures. Thank you. Thank you, Director Elliott. We'll now move to item 10A, which is the confirmation of the May 22nd regular board meeting, the May 29th special board meeting, the June 12th special board meeting, and the June 19th special board meeting minutes. 
I'll look for a mover of all those minutes. Thank you, Trustee Hart, seconded by Trustee Todd. All those in favor? Thank you. Is there any business arising? Seeing none, um, we'll move to the student trustee update. Trustee Kim. Thank you. Um, so on May 24th, we held our first student leadership conference titled Ignite here at the board office. This was a huge success with almost 300 students and staff in attendance. Students were able to share their thoughts and inputs regarding their issues across the board during the open space session led by Rick Pardo and Superintendent McKenzie. We also had our two keynote speakers, Joel Hilchi, a, a motivational speaker, and Sham Smitty, a former uh, TDBSB student trustee. I want to thank Trustee Morrell, Superintendent McKenzie, and Dev for all their help putting this conference together and this would have not been possible without them. On the same day, all incoming and outgoing student trustees attended the Austin Eco's annual general meeting and the student trustee alum Nagella at the Marriott Toronto Eaton Centre from May 24th to 27th. The conference served as an opportunity for newly elected student trustees to accompany their outgoings to the conference to learn what Austin Eco is all about. Outgoing student trustees also had the opportunity to reflect back on the previous year and work on any final projects. The conference also had engaging keynote speakers such as Mark Kielberger, co-founder of We Movement, and our very own Cheryl Reed, who did a fantastic job um, doing the panel discussion for Life After Austin. We also elected our new ex executive council, where our incoming student trustee, Sarah Chen, was elected the administration coordinator. Student trustee Kennedy Lavdis and I would like to wish the student trustee elects Nika, Sierra, and Bella the best of, best of luck next year. Thank you, and we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Trustee Kim? Seeing none, we'll move to item 12A, the accessibility plan updates. And we'll start with Superintendent Sheila Builder. Thank you, and through the chair. I'm pleased to share with the Board of Trustees this evening the updates to the 2017, or sorry, the updates that have taken place uh, this year to the accessibility plan. I want to start, though, with some thanks to our accessibility committee, which is comprised of our community partners, Trustee Rob Campbell, staff, and our union representatives. This year, part of our work was to prioritize um, our work in 2018-19, which I will share in the presentation, um, but also to really look at other boards' accessibility plans and some of our own policies um, that will be reviewed next year. The presentation, however, is based on our current plan um, and the six barriers that were identified in our plan. So just to start, um, the plan was originally developed by our Accessibility Committee um, and details of priorities for 2017 to 2019. As mentioned, uh, the priority for the committee as we determined this year was to, to do a, a new plan next year um, in 1819 and the, prior, the reason for that is to align it with uh, the uh, integrated uh, accessibility standards regulations. Um, in addition, the committee has, has, as I mentioned, looked at some of our policies and, and uh, they've prioritized those also that they'll be reviewing. In December, we did complete the TVDSB two-year AODA compliancy report and that was submitted. Under the area of uh, communication, just one of the things that uh, took place this year is that this was happening every year, but we did need to make some changes. All of our teacher candidates, our co-op students, our secondary students on co-op placements are required to complete their AOD mandatory training. So are our staff. Um, we have uh, this training is once it's completed, a summary is provided to the principal. Um, we in this. 2017-18 school year did do changes to the online training. We are using a website called Access Forward, which provides training for an accessible Ontario. So that is a free training module that we do now provide to staff and uh, these, these individuals. In addition, uh, some of the other actions that took place this year, as you know, we have migrated from first class to office uh, 360 suite, 365 suite, sorry, um, and enhanced staff usage and uh, access to the AODA compliant functionalities and set settings. In addition, we've looked at um, the transa translation tools that are available in the parent portal and school messenger. And again, just addressing that barrier of uh, being able to go beyond the English language. 
Our IT department is always looking at opportunities um, through software upgrades and enhancements to improve the AODA functionality in our software. The special education department uh, did uh, conduct a pilot project this year as part of our SIA automation and SIA uh, priority where we had provided training to staff, um, whole class training. There will be a report that will be coming forward in the fall to update you on SIA automation and that pilot training. As you also know, the, we had launched a website this year, a new TVDSB website, which is AODA compliant. Um, one of our next steps in this area is training for school staff to ensure that the content on school websites is also in accessible formats, and that's part of the plans for moving into next year. The next two slides just outline some of the structural or facility updates um, that were completed. I won't go through all of the um, enhancements or the, uh, and the projects that took place, but you can see that there were um, a number of things that, took, uh, that uh, we completed at AB Lucas, Ashley Oaks, Byron Northview, Byron Southwood, East Elgin, Evelyn Harrison, John Sove, Kensal Park, um, our Pond Mills site, Lord Roberts French Immersion, Carchet, Summers Corners, and IDCI, Montcalm, and Saunders all have Braille signage. Um, and that again was a, a new area of focus for us under the communication section of our accessibility plan. Just giving you some visuals of some of the enhancements. So uh, this is um, uh, just a picture of what we, what we include when it comes to tactile indicators on, for some of our blind and low vision students. That's called Stair Nothing um, that is highlighted again to support some of our blind low vision students and, and guests to our building. An ex uh, just an example of an accessible drinking fountain universal washrooms. In some buildings, we, um, we, we put in an inclined stair lift to support some of the um, students that may require that, or an elevator, and it just really depends um, on the building. When it comes to our procedures, policies, and practices, uh, one of the areas in, outlined in this uh, version of our plan um, just to update you on some of the actions, we did do mandatory training of all of our learning support teachers with respect to transitions for students, and that's really to help to support that communication of students' strengths and areas for growth and some goal setting and planning. We did that this year, and we've continued our IEP consultation process again, just really to ensure that communication of student needs to all teaching staff. At this point, I'll just uh, open it up if there are any questions. Are there any questions on this report, Trustee Tisdale? Thank you. Um, I'm hoping you can answer a question for me. I noticed in a number of locations we replaced existing elevators with Lulas. And I have to tell you, I have no idea what a Lula is in this case. I'm assuming it's some type of elevator. Do you want? Uh, through the chair, I, I don't know what the acronym is, but I can find out for you. like a hula hoop. Um, Trustee McKinnon, then Trustee Bennett. Thank you, through you, Chair, uh, to the staff. Our inclined stair lift, are we looking at providing that to all schools eventually, or, we, or do a, does a school have to apply to, to uh, be looked at? So through, through the Chair, um, we will be embarking actually this summer, that's one of the projects that Superintendent Mark and I um, do and we, it has happened every year, is really looking at a needs assessment. Um, some of that is sparked by student needs that may change. Um, and But we do have an audit that was conducted many years ago, so we do know what schools require uh, that accessibility feature, and we prioritize and review that list regularly. So schools don't need to apply. Um, sometimes it is really student needs based, um, but other times it's just we, we have a list and, and, and we maintain it based on the audit that was conducted years ago. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you, um, similar to Trustee McKinnon's question, mine is on um, making um, some of our secondary schools accessible. 
um, not only for students that might be there, but for community members or parents that may want to attend functions uh, at some of our secondary schools where it's impossible to ramp. Um, and, and perhaps um, an elevator would be uh, an answer to those issues. So I, I just wonder, I know you mentioned the, the, the survey that was done a few years ago, but times change, people change, the community changes, and I just wondered whether there were plans in um, the, perhaps the next two years to make some of those secondary schools accessible. So, oh. I'll start, and then maybe Superintendent Marks wants to go. I appreciate the question, Trustee um, uh, Bennett. Um, it, you know, we, as I said, we are getting together and we are prioritizing this, in fact, next week and doing a review, a uh, continual review. In addition, um, I do think there's some proactive work. I know as a committee we've talked about um, really raising awareness, and I think that there is some work that we, do, we could be doing and we will be doing in that area to really uh, allow some of our schools, administrators, particularly maybe in elementary, um, to understand which buildings are not accessible when they're planning events. And I think that that would behoove us to do that and that is part of our intention. But at the same time, we will be working together with uh, Superintendent Mark's team to really revisit some of those uh, secondary schools and look at what are the needs now that need to take place. Um, it's time to refresh that list. Thank you, any other questions on this report? Oh, um, Superintendent Mark. Have a definition for the Lula elevator, if you're interested. It is limited use and limited application. Lula stands for limited use, limited application. It's a hybrid between a full-size commercial elevator and a wheelchair lift. It looks and rides just like any other elevator. Sole function is to provide handicap accessibility to a building. Thank you for that. Any other questions before we move on? Seeing none, we'll now move to the Compliance Audit Committee report and I'll ask um, Director Elliott to present that. Thank you, through the chair uh, to the board. Um, there is a recommendation um, before you as part of this report um, that the following individuals be appointed to the Compliance Audit Committee. Uh, Fraser McDonald, Melanie Molnar, Marianne Park, Andrea Deo Sukdio, and John Trudgeon. Um, as part of the Municipal Elections Act, we are required to establish a compliance audit committee to hear and decide on applications regarding a candidate's campaign expenses. This is a four-year term. Uh, we advertised widely through social media channels and a public notice um, in newspapers to uh, seek individuals who may be interested to serve on this committee. I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Can we start with the mover of the recommendation? Uh, Trustee Tisdale, seconded by Trustee Morrell. Is there any questions, Trustee Tisdale? Um, how many applications in total did we receive or was it just the five that are here? I believe it's the five that were listed. Okay, okay. see no other questions. We'll call the question. All those in favor? Thank you, that is approved. We will now move to Item 12C, the use of board supported capital for Southside Public School and Associate Director Pratt will start. Uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair, this report is before you this evening uh, to formally wrap up the Southside Capital Project. Um, as you're aware, the board must approve all appropriations, uh, specifically approve board supported capital transactions. Um, as the report indicated, uh, the project was approved at the board meeting on September 27th of 2016. And it was approved in the capital amount of 3.6 million. Um, this was a pre-tender amount, um, and the actual tender and the actual project totaled 5.4 million. Uh, so, therefore, uh, this motion is uh, before you this evening to approve the difference of 1.8 to ensure that our financial records um, match the actual transaction. I'd be pleased to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee Hart. You'll move it. Is there a seconder for the recommendation? Trustee McKinnon. Um, any questions on this item? Trustee Morrell. <clears throat> Just a question um, related to, in our, the, according to the September 27th um, minutes of 2016, the addition was to um, increase the OTG to approximately 300. 
and yet I see the on the ground capacity has increased to 366. Was that through the, can you help me understand how it was that we were able to um, increase the capacity by an additional 66 OTG? Um, through um, the, uh, the process uh, in the planning department uh, work, it was determined that um, the, the final amount of 366 was uh, deemed to be the appropriate OTG of the building. So um, I would suspect, um, in the absence of Executive Officer Bushell, that the difference in price between the 3.6 and 5.4 would um, be attributable to that increase in square footage. So um, thank you for highlighting that, uh, Trustee Morales. I was going to mention that. Thank you. Okay, I have Trustee Tisdale then Hart. Um, thank you. A couple questions. The first one's on the timing of that, and I realize some of the players have changed in that, but it seems odd that we would receive a request this far after the fact. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's any comments on that. Uh, through the chair, I would uh, completely agree with your comments. Um, administration wanted to bring this forward to uh, be fully transparent with the trustees and to wrap up this project in totality. Um, and not being able to ask the opportunity of Executive Officer Bushel because he's no longer here. Um, I'm not sure um, if it was just a misstep or why it wasn't brought to the board earlier. So uh, on behalf of the administration, my apologies. So thank you. Um, second question is, I, I'm just trying to put the numbers together and I realize I should be able to do the math considering my paid employment, but we're, we approved 3.6 in board supported capital previously and 1.6 in school renewal. And you're looking for an additional 1.8. So the total product project was 7 million. Am, am I doing the math correctly on that? Uh, not quite. You're a little okay. bit uh, south on the final total amount. The actual project total is 9 million. So, um, because of the renewal needs of that facility. So um, 5.4 is the actual amount of the addition of the building. So that is the increase in uh, footprint. And then in addition to the 5.4, there is an additional 3.6 million that we've invested through school renewal funds, of which 2.6 is school condition funding and 1.0 million is school renewal funding. So, um, and as you're aware, and I'll, um, some of the other trustees maybe as well, school renewal funding you can't use. Uh, we're not permitted to use that funding to increase uh, building footprint. So that is why uh, we're, uh, we need to utilize the board supported capital to, uh, to fund the actual 5.4 of the increased square footage. And then um, the other interior renovations on the existing building um, is what, um, what constituted the 3.6 million. Thank you, Trustee Hart. Thank you, I just wanted to comment um, how appropriate this is to uh, fix this particular school. This um, site was likely one of the worst conditions of any school in, in Thames Valley. And uh, congratulations to uh, uh, all of the administration that were able to find a creative way to use board supported capital because we were not eligible for ministry funding. And that's when, where it's really important to have board supported capital so we can do some of these things uh, that we don't have to necessarily close schools. Or we don't have any schools that we could close in order to uh, fix up this school. I have uh, visited the site and uh, yes, I appreciate that the, uh, the former school that had to be renovated was likely more expensive than originally the intention was. There have been a lot of challenges about that but I think the end result is we're going to basically have a brand new school uh, as a result of this. So uh, thank you very much for making this a priority and doing it. See no one else, I do have one question. In the site plan, it identifies an eight unit porta pack and I just wanted to know what is the status of the portables? Have they been now removed now that we've increased the OTG? Um, is, um uh, through the chair, that is the plan. I'm just trying to get an update, and I'll, I'll get an update for you. Okay. Thank you. I know we always appreciate 
having more portables available. Trustee Tisdale. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to say I, I am supportive of the capital being used this way, and I appreciate the transparency that this senior administration team has shown in bringing this issue forward, and I, I look forward to more frequent updates in the future, and I know we'll get them under the leadership of the team here, and I appreciate that. Thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you, Trustee McKinnon. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Just to bring you an update on the uh, porta pack, which was an eight uh, classroom porta pack with no water and no washrooms, where the sight lines were awful in the school. I believe the day it's going to be destroyed is July the 12th, and I will be there to watch it. So thank you very much to our senior admin because it's uh, it's going to increase uh, everything in that area, and the kids are just love the. The, the new activity room really, gymnasium now, and I believe they will be all standing to watch that portable porta pack leave. Nothing like a demolition to bring a crowd out. Um, all right, so we do have a recommendation on the floor. All those, we'll call the question. Um, all those in favor? Any opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move back to Superintendent Builder for the special education plan for 2018-19. Through the chair, I'm very excited to share with the Board of Trustees the 2018-19 special education plan as revised by the special education department in collaboration with SEAC and SEAC subcommittee for your approval this evening prior to the submission to the Ministry of Education. As you know, under Regulation 360 of the Education Act, each year boards are required to review their special education plan and report any changes prior to July 31st. Uh, over the past three years, the SEAC and the Special Education Department have uh, continuously reviewed and revised all the standards. I'd like to take the opportunity at this point to really thank our SEAC members and the department for the hours of work that again have been put into revising this plan that we present to you tonight. At the June 4th SEAC meeting, a recommendation was made to the board to approve the 2018-19 special education plan included in your package. Um, we will submit the changes by July 31st. I just wanted to add um, that this year, one of SEAC subcommittees had a priority to raise awareness of our special education plan. There's so much rich information in our plan about the programs and services that we offer in Thames Valley District School Board. So some of the activities that we did was to provide uh, each school principal um, information to share with school councils. We developed a summary of each standard that will be included on our board website. Um, we conducted professional learning activities, our opportunities at both our TVACE and TVSAC uh, committee meetings, which are our elementary principals and our secondary principals, our new administrator sessions, and at every learning support teacher meeting this year, the special education plan was included. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions on the special education report? Trustee Goodall? Not a question. I just want to echo my support for um, the folks in the department that have worked so hard on this, as well as the SEAC um, group that has put endless hours into this and their passion. So thank you very much. Given those accolades, I'm wondering if you are prepared to move the recommendation that the Board of Trustee approve the um, special education plan for 1819, which was recommended by the SEAC committee prior to the submission to the Ministry of Education. I would be honored to second Joyce's first. Okay, I just need hands up. <laughs> Great. Is there any other questions on this report, Trustee Bennett? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Not a question, but um, I hope that my fellow colleagues notice that the, the plan is provided electronically and um, I hope that um, you took the opportunity to note the changes that were in that. And for the sake of the trees, um, we thought that rather than provide that big binder, which we often have, that this um, made more sense. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Hart. 
Yes, I didn't print it off, but I just wanted to comment that um, um, this is one of the most valuable resources as a trustee when a parent phones and asks about, um, you know, what do I do or what, what what's the situation. It's very helpful to be able to refer them to it and to be able to look at it on the website. I'm looking forward to that and be both of us be looking at the same thing at the same time so the, the parent can go back to the principal or back to the school and say, this is what I'm looking for, this is what I would like to discuss for my child. So I think this is a great step uh, forward, so appreciate that. Thank you. Seeing no other questions or comments, we'll call the question. All those in favor of the recommendation, thank you, that is approved. Uh, we will now move to item 12E, which is the 2018 to 2022, um, 2022, let's say that, um, otherwise I'm not gonna be clear. Um, so the board strategic plan, and I've asked Trustee Todd to start us off on um, the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you uh, to my colleagues around the table. Uh, you have the report in front of you. You have a document that looks small, but it's really not small because you've all hammered away at it faithfully for months. I'd like to commend my colleagues for the uh, intestinal fortitude required to work their way through the language and the concepts behind setting goals for our administration. What we have is a simple but clear document that gives the kind of direction that the administration needs in order to operationalize our aspirations. And I'd like to uh, thank, first of all, you personally as individuals for investing the time and effort to do this. I'd also like to express my thanks to the senior administration who, help us, who helped us resource and sort out how to uh, manage this process. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank the director for uh, in endorsing the work that trustees must do on this. Um, in that regard, I turn the report over to you and uh, welcome the discussion that'll follow. Thank you. So there are two pages um, found in the report and we'll take each um, separately, but um, they are both, you know, uh, highlighting different aspects of the strategic plan. So the first page is um, with the our mission and our vision. Those have not changed from the current plan, um, but there are the goals um, which are broken down between relationships, equity and diversity and achievement and well-being. Um, so I'm open to a mover of the recommendation that the mission, vision and goals um, um, of be approved and form the strategic plan for Thames Valley for 2018 to the year 2022. Um, is there a mover? Okay, um, moved by um, Trustee Todd, um, was seconded by Trustee Morell. Um, is there any um, like revisions or any comments? An amendment to the recommendation. Sorry, my apologies. An amendment, if I'm a friendly amendment, if I might, to the recommendation that the board approves the strategic plans priorities and goals for the 2018 through to the 2022 for the Thames Valley District School Board for approval. We, there still is a component that we will be working on. So I'd like the priorities and goals to be added to the recommendation. Um, yes, yeah, so your, sorry, the goals section I was talking about was the priorities and the goals all here. So um, I'm just trying to make sure. I, I would understand. like the wording priorities and goals added sure. to the recommendation. Okay, that's um, simple enough in a friendly amendment. Is that um, accepted by the mover? Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments on the first page? Trustee Polhill. Um, I just wanted to make the comment that when I look at this document, I feel a whole lot more ownership over this. I feel like I was a part of this and I just like to thank everybody involved, the superintendents, the administration and the trustees, because I think that when we did it this way, we did it right. And that I think we can, we all see a little bit of ourselves in it. And uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I feel like this reflects me and my ideas and my, my thoughts as well as everybody else's and I, I'm really proud of the document that we created. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Trustee Tisdale. Thank you. Just looking for clarification on the recommendation. So the recommendation has been changed. Can I have it read out the way it's been changed? Through the chair that the priorities and goals of the 2018-2022 strategic plan be approved. My intent was, well, my intent was that the board approves the strategic plan priorities and goals for the 2018 to 2022 years for the Thames Valley District School Board. So after strategic plan, adding the priorities and, and goals. Okay, so um, that is the recommendation. That's what we will be reflected in the minutes. Um, is there any other discussion on the strategic priorities and goals? I know we've had many nights of discussion before, so um, all right, we will call the question on this. All those in favor of this part, thank you. Any opposed? Seeing none. Um, we can now move to the second part of the report, which is listed as the the commitments and the value statements. Um, I, I'm being told that there might be a more up-to-date version than, um, just give me a quick second. I'm wondering if <laughs> Chair, uh, Vice Chair Morrell. Chair Reed, if it'll help you, if it, it'll, if it would help, we've realized in looking at what is in front of us that it is missing one of the commitment value statements that we had worked on. It was a commitment and value statement that the ad hoc um, strategic planning advisory committee had suggested to us, and that we um, that there were that it would be included that there was a specific value statement to the value that the staff offers students and the system and that's the value statement that appears to be missing so i'm prepared to move that um, we approve the value statements we believe in as have been presented to us but that we also find the one that is has been left out of the list that we have in front of us and that it will be the intent is that it would be included in the uh, ver final version of the commitments and value statements. Thank you. And what is, can you read that out for us? Do we have the, um, we don't have the wording. Uh, my apologies, I don't have my file in, in front of me. The intent of the wording was that we value um, the role that staff has in supporting students and um, the system. Okay, um, just because I think we need um, clarity, I, that was the one that I um, noticed wasn't reflected in here and just so that we have absolute clarity and everyone knows exactly what we're um, voting on. What I'm gonna suggest is we actually park this until September so that we can um, get that wording from the bolt. Um, and we will bring this forward and vote on the value statements. Um, the main goal to, no pun intended, was to pass the goals. Um, so we have um, dealt with that aspect of it. So we will um, figure out exactly what we um, had decided a couple weeks ago um, and get that wording back in there um, so that we can then have a complete copy and um, pass that. So. We will um, park this for the month, Trustee Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't have an issue with, with waiting until we have, because we did work hard on, on that wording, so I'd, I would rather wait and get the correct thing. My question, I guess, through you to the director, is will this 
in any way hold back the communication department from doing their work um, to plan the marketing of, of this work? Ideally, it would be nice to have the whole package because when we're looking at the, um, the, the packaging of it, we want the whole thing. Um, at, uh, the goal, for sure, the approval of the goals will assist um, senior team in developing the operational plan, so that is a key piece for this evening. Um, but ideally, I'm just thinking if there's a way that we can um, move this piece forward so that we can start looking at, um, you know, whether or not it's posters or other um, materials that we will be communicating to our, our Thames Valley community, because it's an entire strategic plan, and that's a key piece of it as well. Trustee Polhill. So just a question, does, does anyone have the wording documented anywhere? Peter? Yes. No? <laughs> Like, did anybody make any kind of jot notes where we might have it written down? Okay, so Arlene has the wording. I'm just suggesting that we all came to an agreement on that date. And somehow, I'm sure that with the wordsmithing professionals we have around the table, we'll recall with notes that people have, the wording that we wanted to use. So I'm happy to move forward with it so long as there's a commitment from, from everybody here that it gets found and put in. And, and I, I'm fine if that's the will of the trustees. I wanted to be fair that um, they're, without it in front of us, um, you know, I didn't want to rush it, but um, if Trustee Morell has her notes that we're able to um, get it, we'll be able to get the um, wording and get that put back in. So we are able to move forward contingent on the addition um, as Trustee Morell has identified, or if we want to wait till September, um, you know, we can do that, but I really would leave it up to um, the board, Trustee Bennett. Um, perhaps a suggestion would be, uh, I, I don't, I know um, Trustee Morell is extremely busy between now and the 9th of July, but um, if, if we could do it electronically, before the at sometime before the end of July, then the communications department and um, the director and the senior staff could move forward. Would that be helpful? Yes, we certainly can do an electronic vote, um, and um, that way we would have the approval to be moving forward with the communications team, um, just so that everyone has the exact wording. I, I'm just a little apprehensive to pass something contingent on wording that we don't have before us, um, so that's my only. Um, slight concern. So if everyone is um, comfortable with that, we will, I will get the wording from Trustee Morell. We'll put it back um, into the document. We'll send that out and do an electronic vote and then we can read that out at the September meeting. Okay. Uh, you had your hand up, Trustee Goodall? Yeah, just, just from a logistics piece. So the electronic, I'm good with everything up until the electronic piece, good with that. But then will it be added to this board package in the minutes that goes out? Um, it would so be read out. It would, would be read out in the September um, minutes, or yeah. At but the, the minutes September. that are published from today's meeting, will it be included in that? It, it would not, because the electronic vote would be happening after. So we will read it out um, during chair's announcements um, uh, at the September meeting, and I will read it out. But so it will be separate. But we'll be able to move forward with the publication communications plan in order to have everything pulled together. So that's really the advantage of doing it this way. Any other questions or concerns with that plan? Seeing none, um, we will move on to item 13A, the First Nations Advisory Committee report. And I will ask Trustee McKinnon to provide that. Thank you, Chair, and through you. I just let me get up to it there. The uh, First Nations uh, Advisory Committee met on May the 15th at uh, Strathroy District for Egypt. And thank you to Principal Clark for providing uh, refreshments put on by the hospitality the department uh, crew. Uh, there were no recommendations come out uh, from this meeting. I'd just like to highlight 
that our First Nations Advisory Committee Terms of Reference was looked at. Uh, we broke into teams, uh, read through it, and we were uh, we provided input to Superintendent Nielsen, or uh, sorry, Superintendent Supervisor Nielsen, and we will re revisit the future that uh, document at a future FNAC meeting, uh, which we did in June. I open to any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions on this report? Seeing none, we'll I go to item 13B, the Chair's Committee Report, Trustee Morell. <clears throat> I'm pleased to bring uh, the report of the Chair's Committee of May 22nd. Committee met from 1215 until 1250 in the afternoon. There is one recommend, the report is in front of you and there is one recommendation. The recommendation I will move that the chair of the board be authorized on behalf of the board to approve personal changes as required during 2018, July and August. We have a mover of the recommendations. There is seconder, Trustee Polhill. All those in favor? Thank you, that is approved. Any other questions on the report? Seeing none, we'll move to the Policy Working Committee report of May 22nd, Trustee Morrell. The uh, report of the Policy Working Committee, May 22nd. The committee met from 3.08 p.m. until 4.12 p.m. One um, committee, or sorry, one policy and procedure that came to us was the policy and procedure related to school response to threatening behaviors and violent threat assessment. This, uh, Paul, this procedure has been posted for 60 days of public input. The rest of the meeting was um, the rest of the meeting contained policies and procedures that have come back from public input, and they've been being provided in your board materials. There is a number of recommendations that I would like to move: that the supporting students with prevalent medical conditions in schools policy be approved that the medical health support for students policy number 5001 be rescinded, that the medical health support for students procedure 5001A be rescinded, that the asthma and students procedure number 4019A be rescinded. Okay, let's do them in chunks um, if we can. So that is um, moved. Is there a seconder of those recommendations? Trustee Tisdale, any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. You have a question? Sorry. Okay. Um, that motion was approved. Um, your question? Yeah, I'm just on, it's my page 152, looking at the existing policy procedures, looking at the school response to threatening behavior, the violence threat assessment. And again, I, I apologize for not giving Superintendent Edgar or Powell a heads up on this. But I, to me, it's unusual to have a board procedure. That, it, that involves uh, a specific service provider. Like, I would understand that, that we would have a procedure. I'm looking at, sorry, uh, item six, paragraph A, the uh, violent threat assessment. So it's my page 152. Stupid, uh, sorry. Uh, do you have the actual page of page? It's, it's the report of the policy working committee. Um, item six, existing policy okay. procedures on the revisions. Report. So item six A. Yes. Okay, I'm with you. It's now. by page one fifty two. Okay, so it's actually the report of the policy committee, right. not the policy um, itself. That's what's confusing me. Thank you. So it's the, the report. So I wasn't questioning the, the motion. Yeah. I, I guess, and, and again, it, we could wait till September for response because I, I haven't given uh, Superintendent Powell or Edgar a heads up, but. Um, it's unusual, in my view, to have a procedure where we actually name um, a particular service provider and we're tied into that. I, I would understand, certainly, the board would, add, would want to have policies and procedures that we have something related to threat assessment in place and that people are appropriately trained and qualified, but, we, but service providers may change from time to time. I mean, there's, more, there's more than one threat assessment tool that exists in Canada. Uh, so I, I guess, and, and maybe there's a rationale, um, but, but I guess I'm... So both Superintendent Edgar and Canham are um, not here tonight, so I think um, what would be, these are good points and we will discuss them at the September um, policy meeting when it is brought back. Um, Superintendent Powell might be able to bring some light. 
I'm not sure, thank you through the chair, I'm not sure that I can shed a whole lot of light yet, uh, since the portfolio is more than a little new to me. Uh, that being said, uh, I'd be happy to provide more information in September on that. I do know that uh, this organization has been working with the board for some time uh, and is, uh, has done international work in this regard, uh, but I'm happy to provide more information in September and we can address that through Business Arising if you wish. Thank you very much. And we'll take the comments under advisement and discuss it further with um, Superintendent Edgar. And, and just for just for clarification, I have nothing against this organization or this individual. It just seems unusual in any board policy or procedure to tie us to a specific organization. So I, I'm, it, it seems. Director Elliott. I don't believe the procedure is um, does name a specific organization in the procedure itself. Um, the procedure is posted um, on the website. I don't have my. Yes. Sorry. Yes. It does. Yes. Okay. Okay. We we'll look into this more and take the comments under advisement. Um, everyone on the policy working committee is currently present, so we'll um, definitely follow up with that. Um, Trustee Morell, would you like to continue on with your? next batch of motions. Thank you, Chair Reed. The next set of uh, motions are related to school councils and home and school associations. And again, the policy and the procedures are also in your package this evening. That the revised school council policy be approved. I recommend that the school council policy number 3003 be rescinded that the school council's conflict resolution process for internal school council disputes policy number 3007 be rescinded, that the school council's parent members policy number 3008 be rescinded, that the school council's conflict, proce conflict resolution process for internal school council disputes procedure number 3007A be rescinded, Thank you. We have a mover of that recommendation, seconded by Trustee Tisdale. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. And if you want to do the last two. The last two are related to home and school associations, that the home and school associations policy be approved, and that the home and school and other parent and student associations policy number 3002 be rescinded. Thank you. There's a mover for that, seconded by Trustee Polhill. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, that's approved as well. Any other discussion on the Policy Working Committee report? Yes. Um, just, I was searching for, uh, back to my earlier comment, which we're gonna come back to in September. I did a search for that policy. We have policies and procedures that are out for public input, and I can't find that document, but maybe I can, I, I did a search for that, the document I referred to, and I couldn't find it on the, Okay. Maybe about after the meeting. And yeah. Let's discuss in about 15 minutes. <laughs> um, okay, we'll move to the Special Education Advisory Committee report of May 29th, and I'll look to Trustee Goodall to present. I'll do the first one, Joyce, if you don't mind helping out on the second. Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, the Special Education Advisory Committee met on May 29th from 12.24 p.m. until 2.44 p.m., the report is in front of you. A um, couple of notes to highlight. The next round of meetings going into next year are highlighted in the report. Um, we also had a very interesting discussion around supervised alternative learning um, in which more information was requested from administration, but I, I think it was well received. Um, we also, the SEAC membership for 2018-2022 was outlined. So there's information there, as well as just draw your attention to, there was one recommendation that came out. It's a bit late at this point, but um, nonetheless, it's important that the SEAC committee's recommendation that the 2018-19 preliminary budget for special education be approved, including the permanent staffing allocation with thanks to the board for their commitment to special education. The advisory committee was very appreciative of um, the endorsement of the trustees. Thank you. Um, the budget was passed last Tuesday, but we do um, always appreciate the input from special education and um, the cooperative, collaborative approach that we um, you know, take with this. <laughs> we did have the recommendation before, and they did approve it before. 
Um, any other questions on the SEAC report? We'll move to the next report of the Special Education Advisory Committee report from June 4th, and Trustee Bennett will present that. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, just a couple of highlights. Um, Superintendent Kuiper and Superintendent Can Canham attended to uh, talk about um, the number of secondary school students with exceptionalities either on an IEP or not on an IEP. And um, the other item of interest was item number seven, um, because it was good news. Um, Superintendent Edgar provided an update on su suspensions and expulsions of identified exceptional or non-exceptional pupils. And um, because we've been working with staff intently through reframing our responses, the number of suspensions of identified students has decreased by 5%, and the average length of suspensions has also decreased. Um, Superintendent Edgar noted that additional improvement is required, but there is change happening even if slowly. Um, she also advised that 30% of school staff have received reframing our responses training and um, hopefully um, that will move forward in, in the fall and uh, more and more staff will receive that training and as a result um, things will, um, responses will be more positive for students in our schools. And uh, we continued to work on the special education plan at that meeting, and you've uh, received the fruits of our labors in an earlier report tonight. Thank you, Thank Mr. you. Are Chair. there any questions on this report? Trustee Tisdale. Um, thank you. I realize these aren't coming for approval tonight. They'll come to the board in September for approval with all the different minutes as part of this package. But I'm just requesting that items 5B and C We've used acronyms there, which um, some of us know what they mean, but not everybody will when reading. So the CYN, item B, is the Child and Youth Network. Um, but CTCC is a fairly newish acronym for many people. It used to be Section 23 schools, and they're now called Care, Treatment, Custody, and Corrections. Um, I just think that that's important for anybody reading this later to understand what those acronyms mean. Thank you. We can definitely reflect that. I'd just like to thank uh, Trustee Tisdale because I purposely didn't read one of them because I didn't know what the heck it meant. <laughs> uh, acronyms, the bane of our existence. Um, any other questions on that report? We'll move to the program and school services um, committee report and Trustee Bennett, um, are you able to present the report from June 5th? <laughs> um, thank you. Um, Couple of highlights. Uh, Superintendent Kuiper presented the family engagement uh, document called Listening, Learning, and Leading. Um, the, this uh, document was informed by the research which was completed by the Parent Engagement Review Committee uh, this spring, and um, information was collected both from surveys and focus groups. And uh, we're pleased that so many people were involved in. Uh, in that production. Uh, item number six, we uh, had an update from Superintendent Kuiper and Superintendent Canham on uh, SAL, Supervised Alternative Learning. And um, in, uh, res in response to one of the trustee questions, Superintendent Kuiper confirmed that funding for part-time students increases to full time if they're enrolled in SAL. And that certainly is a message that needs to be spread far and wide because I don't think necessarily that principals and counselors in schools realize that. Um, there were other questions of clarification on uh, the SAL report. And just as an aside, um, last week, um, Trustee McKinnon and I uh, met with Superintendent Kuiper and the other members of the, um, the SAL committee uh, to review the progress 
of the applicants from uh, this year. And it was uh, very exciting to realize that even if the opportunity that some of these young people had was very limited because of their limitations, they did make progress and they were continuing to be involved. And that's the bottom line, not to lose them. So it was great to, um, to be part of that review. And uh, Mr. Chair, if I might, um, as um, Chair of uh, Program and School Services, I would like to acknowledge the support um, that the committee had from Becky Keast in Corporate Services. Uh, I know that um, Trustee Goodall would agree with me that it's most important for um, committees, advisory committees like this to have support from Corporate Services. And I wanted to publicly thank uh, Becky Keese for her help and also to congratulate her on her appointment to be assistant to Superintendent Edgar in the fall. Excellent. Any other questions or comments on this report? We will move to the Planning and Priorities Advisory Committee report. Trustee Goodall. Always a pleasure to follow you, Trustee Bennett. Uh, the Planning and Priorities Advisory Committee met on June 12th from 6.30 till 7.37 p.m. Um, the report is in front of you. A couple of key topics that were discussed. Uh, Superintendent Mark had given us an overview of the 2018-19 capital projects review um, and what we can expect coming up shortly. Um, our finance department provided us with the 2017-2018 interim financial report as well as the the one that created a bit of controversy for us in item 8b sts policy update so again sts policy regarding busing cancellations due to fog delays so based on the feedback that they had gathered um, from parents through the survey the policy has been changed such that buses will be cancelled for the morning uh, instead of fog delays but they will be running in the afternoon no further comments Thank you. Any questions or comments on this report? Seeing none, we'll move to the Audit Committee report of June 12th and Acting Chair Morell. <laughs> it uh, gives me great pleasure to present the report. However, I'm uh, most confident that Trustee uh, Tisdale would be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, the, uh, we had quite a productive um, meeting in the absence of Trustee Tisdale. We, <laughs> we, uh, we received a report on the uh, schools cash.net, the selections for the uh, schools that will be reviewed during the remainder of the 2018 year, and those schools are listed in, in uh, the report. We also received for information um, a report from, Dr. Or from Director Elliott that, um, and she was pleased to share that the board is compliant with the current federal, provincial acts, regulations, and statutes. Um, number seven, the uh, draft audit committee work plan was reviewed. There were a few suggestions that were made. The, we received, our, our Chair Tisdale received a letter from the Minister of Education related to concerns um, uh, regarding the recommendations that were made by the Office of the Auditor General. Also, the draft 2018-2019 internal audit plan was presented and I have one motion that I would like to move that the 2018-2019 internal plan be approved. We have a mover of the recommendation seconded by Trustee Tisdale. Any discussion? See none, all those in favor? Thank you, that is approved. Any other questions or comments on the meeting you didn't attend, Trustee Tisdale? I just wanted to thank Trustee Morrell because I know she loves audit on chairing the audit committee while I was caught up on an audit. So thank you. There's a whole lot of audits going on. Um, Trustee Bennett. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, first of all, a confession. I um, have avoided at all costs being part of the audit committee. However, I do have a question. Um, uh, I look at the list of schools that are having a school cash net review. Uh, they're all 
um, elementary schools, so I, I make the assumption that we only do that with elementary schools. Superintendent Beal. Through the chair, um, this schedule is uh, reflective of the elementary schools only. We um, do desk audits, uh, basically off the school site um, at the central office for elementary. Um, we would do um, other um, audits for secondary schools throughout the year because secondary school staff are there uh, during the summer break. And in regards to your other comment, I am delighted to say that there will be some openings on the audit committee after the next election for the four-year term. So um, we'll be looking for lots of applications from trustees. <laughs> Moving on to the Thames Valley Parent Involvement Committee, um, Trustee Morell, or sorry, Trustee Tisdale. Um, thank you. You have the report in front of you. Um, I'm not going to go over a whole lot of it. Needless to say, I will point out, though, uh, plans are underway for um, activities, um, an event in the fall of 2018, and also some work on some school council resources. So while many of our schools and our students will be taking a break, in fact, in the work, first week of July is our first meeting, um, well, not our first meeting, but is already our first date set for our summer meetings where TVPIC will continue their work throughout the summer. So uh, there are no recommendations. Thank you. Any questions on this report? Moving to the Chair's Committee report of June 19, Trustee Morrell. <laughs> the report of the Chair's Committee, June 19, the committee met from 1215 until 1226 in the afternoon. The report is in front of you. There is one recommendation that trustees B. McKinnon, A. Morrell, and P. Schuyler be appointed to continue as mentor to the three new student trustees for the period ending 2018, November 30th. There is a mover of that recommendation, seconded by Trustee Goodall. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, thank you, that is approved. And just so trustees are aware, um, as those trustees will be continuing on until the election, and then there will have to obviously be a review of that, the seating plan will continue on um, exactly with what it is right now. So there won't be any required changes. Moving on to the First Nation Advisory Committee report of June 19th, Trustee McKinnon, are you able to provide this? I am, thank you. And through you, Chair, uh, the committee met on June 19th between 3.13 and 5.12 p.m. The report is in front of you. There are no recommendations. Uh, I do want to highlight that Chief uh, Roger Thomas did come and pay a visit to the committee, uh, bringing greetings from Muncie, Delaware, uh, thanking us for the work that we're doing with all the communities, and I'm very happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions on that report? Seeing none, we'll go to the Committee of the Whole in camera report of June 26. Trustee Morell, are you able to provide that? I can provide that, and also I have a policy working That committee. will be the next item. Thank um, you. I forgot to add it at the beginning, but that will be item It'll follow M, this M, one. Item M. <laughs> The, the in-camera committee of the whole, June 26, 2018, the committee met in camera from 5.01 p.m. to 6.10 p.m. The committee discussed confidential legal matters, personal matters, and there was no conflicts of interest um, declared. I have a recommendation that the motions approved at the in-camera session of June 26, 2018 uh, related to legal and personal matters be approved. and I. And I have a second recommendation. Shall I read that one as well? Um, that the following members be approved to the um, Thames Valley Parent Involvement Committee. That Laura Bick be appointed to the position of parent member for a two-year term representing Linden's ward, wards 1, 11, 12, and 14. That Jonathan Grant be appointed to the position of parent member for a one-year term representing Linden wards two, three, four, five, and six, that Fatima Alman be appointed to the position of parent member for a one-year term representing London wards seven, eight, nine, 10, and 13, that Dana Parsons be appointed to the position of parent member for a one-year term representing Middlesex County, 
that Melissa Bays be appointed to the position of parent member for a one-year term representing Elgin County and that Rahad Ibab be appointed to the position of community member representing the Islamic Center of Southwestern Ontario for a one-year term. Thank you. There is a mover of all those recommendations. Is there a seconder of all of those? Trustee Tisdale, any discussion? Call, oh, Trustee Hart. Just, just a quick question. Um, can, can you tell me how many vacancies there are on the Parent Involvement Committee? <laughs> Trustee uh, Tisdale. Uh, there are five. There is an opening still for one additional community organization. There is an opening for a uh, parent representative to represent our Indigenous community. And there are three other areas of the board where there are parent uh, openings. We will be posting those again um, in September for those vacancies, hoping to, sorry, hoping to fill those positions. Thank you. We'll now call the question on the recommendations. All those in favor? Thank you. That is carried. Um, we can now move to item M, the interim policy working committee report of today. Trustee Morrell. I'm pleased to uh, present the policy working interim report. The materials uh, you will find on your desk. The policy working committee met today um, from 3.09 to 4.28 p.m. The following motions were moved and carried. That the revised homework guidelines independent procedure number 9054 be approved and provided to the board for information at tonight's meeting. And that uh, homework guideline independent procedure is also part of uh, the materials that were placed at your desk. And that the harassment policy and procedure be approved and provided to the board for information at tonight's board meeting. And it also, the procedure is also at um, your desk for information. Thank you. Are there any questions on that report, Trustee Tisdale? Just looking for clarification, I understand the recommendation here. Was there a harassment policy or just the procedure? Okay, thank you. Sorry, Trustee Griffith, or Trustee, uh, Superintendent Griffith Jones. Uh. There were no revisions to the policy, just revisions to the procedure. Thank you for clarifying. Um, any other questions on this report? Trustee Jaffe? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, um, it's on this report, but it also goes back to the earlier policy report, and it's, it's a broad question. I'll start with the director, um, and that's, uh, I try to, I'm wondering sometimes when we pass policies and procedures, to what extent our staff and our leaders, our principals can keep up to date. Like I, I think about some of the challenging jobs in our system, I think principal has to be one of the hardest ones. Um, in reading this, uh, this procedure and then earlier that we approved uh, uh, the procedure on um, I just have it here on uh, supporting students with prevalent medical health conditions in schools and I'm I, I'm trying to picture how how a principal stays on top of all these uh, issues whether whether we do ongoing training um, anyway that, that's my, my start of a, of a question but I I, I guess more, this is more philosophically that, that as a trustee, I'm always happy when I see new policies and procedures and I think we're doing the right thing, but I worry how they filter down to the field and the, the level of responsibility on student, on uh, school leaders to actually be on top of all these issues and know what to do under what conditions. Uh, through the chair, I'll start and then I can turn it over to associate director. There's a whole pile of superintendents that are nodding to say that they could answer the same question, so they uh, might want to weigh in as well. Um, typically with um, our uh, policies and, pro or, and procedures um, through the community of schools meetings, there would be uh, discussion and um, updates um, to our principals and vice principals. Um, with some of these very specific policies, our harassment, I'm looking at the prevalent uh, medical conditions, and um, I'll take those two, for example, there will be more extensive training um, for, uh, for 
at least for the uh, all staff for the harassment and many staff for the uh, the prevalent medical conditions. With the homework um, guidelines, I do know um, Superintendent Colhane, who will be in the associate director role. We do have plans to work with our principals at the first community schools meeting in August. Um, to give them a refresher on the homework guidelines as well because this is the one that really impacts um, all classrooms in Thames Valley. Uh, I appreciate that and I, I just, uh, I, I, I picture all the stress on our principals keeping up to date. I just, I picture, and it's a job I could never do. I have trouble just managing a, you know, to our birthday party uh, with, with various allergies. I actually I spent, I, uh, I spent the weekend with, with a young man who could speak for himself who had a peanut allergy and it made you nervous everywhere you went and every uh, restaurant you went to, but I can't picture being a principal and having 200, 500 students. I guess one of the things is there an inter, I, I picture every principal must have a very interactive uh, computer where you, you know, you can type in some words, get the right policy or procedure right away because you're going to have to, you can't memorize all this and so you're going to have to really be able to look up things quickly and, and know who to call. Is that, is that fair to say? Uh, well, there are robust um, search features on our new website. Um, there are, would always be conversations, um, not only at community schools, but individually with, um, with uh, school superintendents um, and with the admin assistants if they are needing clarification or if they are right in the middle of an issue. Um, we have uh, excellent relationships between principals and superintendents and they would call their superintendent um, to receive some guidance and walk them through um, procedures if they're not too clear on, on how to handle a specific issue. And, and just to add to that, um, over the last year or two, the Policy Working Committee has worked with our um, senior administration to condense down a lot of um, policies. So where before we might have had three or four um, that related to safe school policies, um, they are now found in one comprehensive document where um, you can control F it or look at the table of contents a lot um, and find what you're looking for a lot quicker um, than knowing exactly the specific um, sub policy, if you will. So um, we have been moving in that direction. There's been a lot of work done, especially by um, Superintendent Griffith Jones um, to try to um, you know, bring those related policies together so that they are in one place for, and make it easier for parents and um, staff alike. I appreciate that. I just, I'm, I, I don't, I think I speak for all the trustees. I wanna make sure that we approve policies, procedures, um, that we're really supporting our staff to, because just having, approving a document doesn't mean anything unless there's a, a training and support and ready access. So I appreciate those comments. Thank you. Any other questions on the interim policy working committee report? See none. Is there any OPSPA update you wish to give Trustee Morrell? No, there's not been a meeting okay. um, since their AGM the beginning of June. Yeah. And any update for the Thames Valley Education Foundation, Trustee McKinnon? Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, on June the 3rd, of course, we held a run for fun. Uh, thank all the trustees, our senior and mid. Our, uh, our staff, our students, our sponsors. Uh, it was just a real fun day and a great uh, cause for our students, for our caring fund. So I thank everybody who participated and who was there and helped out, uh, especially our students as well who uh, gave a lot of their time. And thank you to Parkside uh, Collegiate in St. Thomas. Uh, just to update trustees, uh, we've had 392 requests this year for our caring fund and we've handed out over $92,000 uh, over the course of this year. Uh, we are making a difference in student lives and it's a fantastic uh, committee to be on and, and be part of. So thanks every, everybody and uh, they're, they're already planning for next year. Excellent, thank you very much for that update. Any questions? Um, See, none. We there is a communication that is attached from the Chippewa of the Thames First Nation, and it is um, there is a recommendation that Evelyn Young be appointed to the First Nations Advisory Committee. Is there a mover of that, Trustee Bennett, seconded by Trustee Morell? Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That is approved. Um, any questions or comments by members? 
then I just would like to wish everyone a wonderful and relaxing summer and we look forward to hitting the ground running in September. Um, and I'll look for a motion to adjourn, moved by Trustee Morrell. That hand went up real quick, Trustee Goodall, so you can second. All those in favor, thank you. And to our guests, um, we will stick behind to answer any questions that you might have on what happened tonight. Thank you.